This week on Focus Outdoors, we'll be headed to the South Dakota to fish the famed Glacial Lakes region with Dennis Foster and friends. There will be folks with a lot of experience, and their mission is to try to get young people to love the sport of ice fishing as much as they do. They are going to use tip-ups, a very effective way to catch many species of fish. It is also fun for the fishermen because you have a direct feel of the fish's movements as he is making his runs and shaking his head trying to get free. And these are not your granddad's tip-ups. They have become precise instruments but are still very easy to use and set up. The best way to keep young people interested in fishing is to catch fish And it does not matter what kind, as long as it tugs on the end of their line. Remember, kids' attention spans are very short. Let them do what it takes to have fun. Sometimes that may not be fishing. But we all hope, most of the time, it is. Hey folks, Dennis Foster here. We're in the Glacial Lakes of South Dakota today. We're going to do a little ice fishing here with tip-up tactics. It's what I would term early late ice, if that makes any sense to you. We're right at the beginning of what I feel is late ice. We've got great ice conditions yet. Uh, we're in the third week of March, but it's going to slowly start deteriorating, and that's when the fishing truly does get good. Obviously, safety is a concern. Use your head. But kind of a key factor, and I was happy to see it today, is when these geese are flying. When they first start showing up, it seems like a good time to start trying this. And it may take a trip or two. It's just kind of a test in the waters type of thing till you hit them just right. And when you do hit them, you can really have some bonus days. The particular body of water we're on has some really good small mouths up to and above five pounds. There's some pike over 20. And there's also some very, very big walleyes in here hence the use of the tip-ups and the bigger baits. As far as location, we're set up off of a long, broad point that dumps right into the basin. And basically what this was years ago was a big slough. And we're right on the edge where it dumps into that slough type stuff. And we've got tip-ups up on top slightly and down in the basin and right on the edges. And these fish just filter up and down these contours. And we're just trying to intercept them, in effect, trapping. It, uh, it's an overlooked tactic. Quite frankly, not enough people do it. I personally don't understand it. You're allowed more than one line in most states. In our case, four. Why not throw the lines out, get some baits in the water, see what happens. And that's just what we're going to do here. Just got set up here waiting uh, for our first bite. Thought I'd take a moment and show you some specifics on uh, this presentation. Good chubs are key to this. Big chubs I prefer, not always easy to find. Once again, that was the case today. Ended up with some small sucker chubs. To help alleviate that problem, a little trick that I've went to is actually running two different baits on there. What I'll do is I will hook one through the mouth as you traditionally will, and then I'll hook one upside down in the tail. And what that'll do is those baits will sit there and struggle against each other and they'll create the profile of a much larger bait, particularly through the fish's lateral line at a distance and the flopping around adds some visual cues. You'll see I've got a colored uh, wide gap hook here too, just another something to key on. And I'm starting from the bottom going to the top. I run heavy uh, Seaguar floral leaders, uh, specifically the premier version of it. They're soft enough 
where the bait can still move well, but they have enough abrasion resistance to resist getting cut off by pike, because we do run into some pretty doggone good pike here in the Dakotas, and it allows you to get them in. Run weights up your line, you know, roughly a foot to 18 inches, depending on the size of the bait. These are small, so I've ran them up further. And then I just run that as a leader. I run it into a snap swivel, so I can change those out quickly should I have a leader get roughed up by pike. Then I run into a heavy braided mainline super line. In this case, I'm using Gorilla Braid, and I believe it's 65 pound test. But what I like about it is it's got the true braid feel to it. It's rough. So when your hands are cold and you're working on these fish, you can actually feel very well as the fish is pulling line from you and you have good grip when you really want to put some torque on the fish. We simply go up the line to a uh, small bobber, which is a depth marker, so you can return to your same depth all the time after a fish. Um, another thing on that too is I run my baits a lot higher than most people do. Most people are in that six inches to a foot stuff and they're just locked into it. Don't be. Particularly in the winter, our lakes typically settle out. We've got crystal clear water. Run that thing up two, three, even five foot off the bottom. Those fish can see it. And then also no different when you're jigging with your Vexilar. If you can get a fish to start rising to a bait, there's a good chance you're gonna get him to commit. Run a, a full spool of line. In this case, I use the HT uh, Polar pop-ups I have for many, many years. I feel they're the, the best system out there for several reasons. One, as you can see, if we were on a, on a tough blustery day and we had uh, a lot of wind, you don't get the wind flags. Also, they won't drift over. Let the doggone thing drift over the top. It'll actually help keep your hole from freezing and they'll still function. You get a bite, it simply pops up. There's your indicator. Uh, another tip, I run two different colors of reflective tape on them too. We do a lot of this after dark. Simply shine a light out, you've got one reflection, no bite. Two reflections, you got a bite. It really is that simple. People overlook the simple things in life. I think it was Jason Mitchell that said it recently, if people figured out just how effective a split shot in a minnow actually was, we'd probably all be out of a job, and by God, he's got a lot of, a lot of validity in that statement. Keep it simple, put a bait where the fish are, the odds are you're gonna get bit. Well, we're on our first bite of the day here. We've got cloudy, kind of foggy conditions just prior to a front moving moving through. I think we're actually on the edge of it. You can just kind of feel the dampness in the air, which for whatever reason, I've seen it where it's worked before. You get them kind of foggy type days. This guy took it and just give it a ride and dropped it. But as soon as this went up, we've got two others up. By God, he knocked the bait off there. Good sign. We're getting bit in the middle of the day. It just bodes well. We're going to end up with more. We'll get him back down and uh, go see what's on these others. Okay. All right. We uh, Like I say, we just got a couple bites here. Knocked the bait off the first two. And this guy was moving when we got here. Now he stopped. I'm going to... Just wait this out for a second. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll grab that bait and they'll run the doggone thing off and then they'll reposition it and swallow it. So I'm gonna give this guy a chance. I'm gonna guess we're dealing with some walleyes here in the middle of the day. I just wanna be extra cautious. Like I say, we missed our first two bites. Just try it real slow. A lot of times just a little bit of tension they'll take and start rolling some more line. He just won't turn and swim away with it. What I'm trying to do is get that fish to turn his head and swim away and ensure I get a better shot at a hook set. I can feel the weight of it. All right, got him. If this is a walleye, this is good. You may be right, Rick. It's just, just steady weight. I've yet to get any head shake to get any indication. A lot of times, if you've done this enough, you can feel how wide that head will shake, and then you'll know how good your fish is. I'm getting pretty close here. Ooh, nope, my God. <laughs> Little northern playing possum on us. Midwest Gundog Kennels is your full-time gundog training facility. 
For over 30 years, we've customized our training to fit each individual gun dog. We know it takes a well-trained gun dog to handle wild birds to make every hunting trip a dream trip. Let Midwest Gun Dog Kennels put excitement back into your hunt of a lifetime. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels, where experience equals excellence. No matter the size, age, or activity level of your best friend, you want a dog food that's natural, feeds great, and is full of all the goodness you demand. That's what we pack into every bag of Country Vet Naturals. Country Vet Naturals are just what the name says, natural goodness in every bag. We also make grain-free cat and dog food and treats. Learn more and find a dealer at CountryVetNaturals.com. Country Vet Naturals, loved by pets, trusted by owners. Well, as you might be able to tell, I spend a lot of time behind a shotgun. Whether it's at the clay target fields, sporting clays fields, doing exhibitions, or bird hunting, I always trust my shooting skills to the Rio Elite. Not only for the lighter recoil, but as you can tell, the harder hitting, consistent patterns. These clay targets don't stand a chance when you shoot Rio Elite. Make your next day on the water even better with Airwave Pedestal, the only air suspension system that can be custom adjusted to the weight of the rider. No unreliable springs, no oil-filled shocks to leak. Our patented design utilizes a two-stage suspension system to smooth out the roughest ride, a limiting travel to an industry-leading two inches. This boating season, enjoy your time on the water to the fullest. Find out how at As we mentioned, this was late ice. Even though it was brisk today, there were signs that spring was not that far away. The geese were hanging around the shoreline looking for nesting spots. Once in a while, they'd get into a squabble. Probably about a girl. Typical guys. Fun to watch between bites. The geese were very amazing. I'm actually watching uh, Rick's tip ups here. He's just dealing with a little northern we just caught getting reset, and he's got a, a windless tip up and a vintage model at that here, and he had a big smelt down just for this purpose. Same thing, just uh, kind of played with some line on that thing and got him to take it, and now, as you can see, he wants to run. Is it running? Yep. Yep. Alive and memorex. Okay, well Rick's still goofing around getting that other uh, tip up going. I'm going to go ahead and take this fish here. You're going to see what I'm going to do to get this out of the way. Is I'm just going to knock this down and move it out of the way. I would assume this fish has got it with as much line as he's ran. I can feel the weight, but just not steady. I think he swam back a little bit. There he got a hold of me. What I'm trying to do here is keep this line out of the hole. Just swimming with me. I've yet to feel any real weight. There's a little weight. There, I can catch up with you. There, I feel a little better. See, not happy. Little key there too with these 
with these marker bobbers, you got to watch. At times they'll get caught in your fingers. You got to just kind of open your hand up and let them go. Yep, about the same. Yep, yep, yeah, it'll take a spin. He's not terribly big, I'm just playing with him. All right, well, we just got our first shallow bite. We're literally on a swimming beach here with a, just an ultra slow taper to it and just inside the weed line, I would guess not even four foot of water here. I did run the bait right up below the ice so they could see it. He's not running, hopefully he does have it. These fish have been sluggish there, he's there. He just won't run with the darn thing though. Oops. There he took it. Yep. And what I'm doing here is just, uh, I just kind of put a little pressure on him, hoping he would do that and run off a much better opportunity for a decent hook set here. And it's not doing that burn thing like a pike. Let's hope it's not. Ooh, whatever it is, it's got a huge head shake. Yes. Ah, just wide head shake. <laughs> he was really swinging there. Dang it! When I first swung, I thought, "Oh boy." Little bugger. Hey. Oh my, this thing took a ton of line, guys. Is it bad? Nope, he's going to be there, but I'm going to give you the line. There he is. Oh, that's a good fish. Grab it. Just keep, just go slow. That is a dandy. He took a ton of line. Yep, just like you're doing. Just perfect. Yep, just like that. Benny, you're going to need to give us a little room here. Okay. North East South Dakota here. Yeah. Perfect. Just keep him coming. You still feel his weight? Yeah. He's being pretty good so far, ain't he? Yeah. It didn't feel pikey when it set the hook. Let's <laughs> hope. If that's a walleye, that's a dandy. Yep. Just perfect. That's what you're doing there. You know, Benny, you stay back there and be our watcher. You tell us what it is when it comes up. Okay, now you're close. Really close. Just keep doing what you're doing. There you go. You're really close. Where is that it? pikey? Oh! Pikey! Hang on, I got it. Maybe. Ah. First bite. Oh, second. Hey! Felt good for a minute. He was in a bunch of weeds and stuff there, too. I don't know if you're going to be able to hang on to him. He's slimy. Got it? Yep, get up by the head. There you go. What do you think? I think he's... Slimy? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Slide him. You, you done playing with him? Yep, put him in head first. There you go. All right, that'll work. Make sure we got him. Okay, I got it. I got this. Hang on. Still there, Dennis? Yep, go ahead and grab it. Grab it. Lift, grab, grab the line. Okay, now lift up. There you go. Keep going. Keep going. I'll help you. So keep, yeah, keep going or he's going to get off. Grab the line. There you go. Keep going. Yep, just like that. One after the other. There you go. Now you got it. Got it ben? He about spooled you, Benny. Yeah. 
Yep, just keep going just like you just like you're doing. There he's close now. Okay, keep going. Grab it. You got a big old piker on there. He's grumpy, ain't he? Yeah. You don't wanna give up. Oh. No, you ain't got a piker. What you got is you're Benny the Wall I catch you. Yay! Well, he was really shaking. Can I hold it? I got feet. Okay, let, watch your watch your fingers in the line, Benny. Let see see it. Let, there you go. Now you got rid of it. There you go. I don't want to hold it. It's really too sharp. Come oh, come in behind me, guys. Watch so you don't step on the tip up so you can get a picture quick. Oh, yay! As the day began to wane, the weather kept changing. Can you see that? Oh, and nice. it started okay. snowing, and the wind oh, blew even that. harder. Oh. The temps were going down fast. As the sun set, it became walleye time. And that is why a fisherman will stand around for a while in this weather. Just because you never know when the big one's going to hit. Dakota Pheasant Guide offers the best wild pheasant hunts from the Glacial Lakes area of South Dakota west to the Missouri River. Packages available include everything from self-guided to fully guided hunts. Book your bird hunting adventure now. Fisherman, iTime Promotions is your ticket to an enjoyable and successful day on the water. Call Dennis Foster for your outdoor adventure of a lifetime. Dennis Foster here. I'd like to introduce you to the Drado Catch and Release Boat Latch System. It's back the trailer into the water, pop the cord, and away we go. Once our day in the water is done, we simply roll the boat up onto the bunks until it achieves contact with the bow eye. It clicks securely into place, and away we go. We are exclusive partners with B2Outdoors.com. That's where you're going to want to go and order your very own system. You can enter the promo code ITIMEPROMOTIONS and receive free shipping on your items. When it comes to dog food and treats, you want something natural. A dog food or special reward that feeds great, is made in the USA, and helps your best friend live a long and healthy life. That's what you get with Country Vet Naturals, natural goodness in every bag. And for those of you who want grain-free, we've got that too. Find a dealer and learn more about Country Vet Naturals dog food, cat food, and treats at CountryVetNaturals.com. Country Vet Naturals, loved by pets, trusted by owners. This is the uh, Little Turtle uh, Wildlife Area, and it's a flowage that's 260 acres of wetland on 1,200 acres. It was owned by the Iron County Forestry, and um, in cooperation with the DNR, a local uh, citizens group, the um, local wildlife uh, sportsman's club, decided that they'd like to have a wetland here, and this was in the 60s, 1960s, they started the process and uh, they actually went to the governor's office and, and got the approvals and stuff like that and in 1970 the dike was built where a beaver pond had historically occurred off and on and uh, so then that uh, dike dammed the Little Turtle River which is the river that comes out, at, uh, out of the lakes in Mercer, they all drain through here and um, created this wetland and then in 1980, there's another little dike that made a sub impoundment of about 15 acres. So we can adjust the water and always have water in one or the other. And um, this type of a wetland uh, project was pretty common in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. And then by the 1980s, um, 
uh, damming uh, navigable bodies or streams was no longer in vogue. And um, so the big projects like this were no longer done. So we're lucky to have it here. It's the number one spot to bird watch, come and look for any kind of wildlife uh, in the county. And uh, it's one of the best spots to duck hunt. It's small, so it's usually good for about a week, and then, then the birds you know, move to bigger water and stuff. But this whole basin here uh, was seeded in wild rice in uh, 1992, and it took really well. And so this will be all filled up with rice in about two months, and then in August it'll get harvested, and we have tribal members, local citizens, and people come from some distance to actually harvest the rice, and it'll suck in hundreds and hundreds of ducks, um, we have trumpeter swans nesting here, and they feed on the vegetative form of the rice. And um, so it's pretty neat. Right now it looks very open, and once the rice starts growing, all you'll see is the river channel that stays open. Everything else fills up with vegetation, and that wild rice is just beautiful uh, habitat for many species. The muskrats are out here. They, of course, they use the plant portion, the stem portion, to build their huts. They feed on that. And um, we occasionally have beaver. Because we have a dam, beaver don't coexist really well because they might try and plug the structure. But uh, lots of wildlife here. And uh, we've had, uh, with the openness here, we've actually, uh, one year in May, had a snowy owl here for uh, uh, our bird, local bird fest tours, bringing birders out here, and, and we had a snowy owl even in May. We do have uh, some artificial osprey platforms and we'll look at them later but we've got nesting osprey out here we have an eagle nest uh, just through the woods that way and we have had loons nest out here but there's no loons this year we have a bunch of waterfall uh, wood duck houses here we get mostly common or excuse me here we get mostly hooded mercansers and so just uh, last week i looked in a nest box and there was a hen sitting on 11 eggs so we do get uh, some waterfall production out here it's the only spot in this county I ever found a gadwall nest. Um, so it's a pretty neat area. And of course we have the assorted shorebirds. Um, we've had least bitterns here, which are quite uh, hard to find and rare. And so it's a real good bird spot. There's, we, uh, I'm a member of our local birdathon team. We're raising money for bird conservation in the state of Wisconsin. And half the money stays locally, which we give to the um, silent sports people for their bike and hiking trails. And here is our first stop on the birdathon. We'll be here at four o'clock in the morning next Sunday, starting our bird uh, birdathon birding trip, which goes all day. So just really. Diesel train rolls down the line As I'm headed for the land of corn and rye There is a place I'm always satisfied Full of remedies to ease my worried mind Like pulling catfish on the banks of Cherry Cove Watching wood ducks glide